it's only at $5.35 a share. Now, Yahoo didn't have an estimate on how high this stock can move up to. But when I work it out by P.E. ratio, this stock can move up to $8.31 a share in the next 12 months. Now that would be a 55.32% return. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about a stock called Innovative Solutions and Support Incorporated. Ticker symbol is ISSC. Now you know I like to break my stocks down by different tiers in terms of fundamental soundness. Three stars is the most fundamental sound. Two stars is beneath that. One star is the least fundamentally sound, but still fundamentally sound enough to be on my watch list. Well, this is a three star. Most fundamentally sound, but surprisingly, it's only at $5.35 a share. Now, Yahoo didn't have an estimate on how high this stock can move up to. But when I work it out by P.E. ratio, this stock can move up to $8.31 a share in the next 12 months. Now that would be a 55.32% return. The stock has a next earnings report dropping on August 7th or later that week and as we can see from this long candle here going down on the chart it actually just dropped significantly it was dropping already and then it took a significant drop as a result of an earnings report that just came out, but the next earnings report is due on August 7th. Now you're probably wondering why I have the words Stock Sage written on this candlestick chart. And the reason I have Stock Sage written on there is because my normal process for picking stocks to buy is I manually would go through the entire 52 week low every day and look for opportunities. And there were so many opportunities I couldn't grab them all. I could only look for the ones that were $30 and above. But I actually now have an app in development. It's not completed yet, but the beginning stages are. And that app is Stock Sage. It actually found this stock, as well as a bunch of $2 stocks that are fundamentally sound last week. So the app goes through the entire 52 week low and looks for opportunities with fundamentally sound stocks. And this is the one that it found today that I am going to analyze for you guys right now. Okay, so the stock that we're going through today is Innovative Solutions and Support Incorporated, ticker symbol ISSC. And we want to start with taking a look at the earnings per share for this stock because we know normally when it comes to cheaper or inexpensive stocks they're often losing money every year 
their earnings are not good. So let's look at this company. And when we look at them in 2019, their earnings are 11 cents a share. In 2020, 19 cents a share. 2021, 29 cents a share. 2022, 32 cents a share. 2023, 35 cents a share. And so far projected in 24, we know it's not over yet but they're at 37 cents a share. So this company, not only have they been making money every year as far as we see, but their earnings have been increasing every year. Now let's look at the high and low prices for the years. In 2019, their low price was $1.80. Their high price was $5.93. That was a 229.44% increase in that year. In 2020, their low price was $2.23. Their high price was $7.62. That was a 241.70% return. So that was the COVID lockdown year, but there wasn't a hiccup. They kept moving along. Increased earnings, increased stock price. In 2021, the low price was $5.48 a share. The high price was $7.69 a share. That was a 40.33% increase over the year. So not as high as the previous years, but a decent return. In 2022, their low price was $5.84. The high price was $9.76. That was a... 67.12% return over the course of the year. And in 2023, the low price was $6.12. The high price was $8.87. That was a 44.93% return over the course of the year. Now, the stock is currently at its low price now which is $5.35. Not to say it can drop further, but as of now, it's at its low price, $5.35. The projected high, based on PE, is $8.31. If it actually goes up to that price, that will be a 55 point thirty three percent return now currently the PE is at fourteen point forty six well in twenty nineteen the low PE was sixteen point thirty six in twenty twenty one it was eighteen point ninety twenty twenty two it was eighteen point twenty five 2023, it was 17.49. So the only year in the last five years where the PE was lower than it is right now was in 2020 when it was at 11.74. But now it's at 14.46. That's lower than it was in all the other years except for the COVID year. So it's very likely that this stock can take a turnaround and move up. We know if we buy it and it continues to move down, we may want to get out of it. But it very likely may turn around and take a turn up and I'll be watching it. And as soon as it does that, I'm jumping on it. So, I already mentioned they have an earnings report coming out. 
the free cash flow yield. Remember, I do my free cash flow yield by five years. The free cash flow yield is 2.92%. I don't really use the free cash flow yield much in my analysis in terms of letting it determine whether I buy a stock or not. But I do put it in there for those of you who do. So we're going to go down and let's look at our income statement. And if we look at our income statement, in 2019, this, this is a small company. And I know when we're talking about $17 million, that doesn't sound small. But in terms of companies that are on the stock market, it could be pretty small. But increasing. In 2019, they made $17,573,000 in sales and revenue. Of that, they retained $1,850,000 after paying all expenses. That was a 10.53% return on your money or profit margin. Now, in and which which is a, I wouldn't say great or a good profit margin, but I'd say decent. But it gets better. In 2020, remember this was the COVID lockdown year, but they still managed to make money. They made twenty one million five hundred and ninety five thousand in sales and revenue, more than the previous year. Of that, they retained 3270000 after paying all expenses more than the previous year. That was a 15.14% profit margin. In 2021, they made 23045000 Of that, they retained 5000000 65,000. That was a stunning 21.98% profit margin. In 2022, they made 27,741,000. Of that, they retained 5,524,000. That was a 19.91% profit margin. And in 2023, they made $34,809,000. Of that, they retained $6,028,000. That was a 17.32% profit margin. So the profit margins fluctuated a little bit. But their net income increased every year and more importantly their sales and revenue increased every year from 17 million 573,000 in 2019 to 34,809,000 in Now, if we move down and look at the return on equity and the debt to equity, their return on equity was 5.11% in 2019, not great. 11.78% in 2020, better, about a little decent. 20.60% in 2021. That was good. 17.96% in 2022. 
and 15.60% in 2023. So I would say their return on equity is decent, particularly for a company that's at $5 a share. But now when we look at the debt to equity, 6.49% in 2019, 49.61% in 2020, 10.17% in 2021, 12.86% in 2022, and 62.95% in 2023. So, for all five years, their debt to equity was under 100%. For four of those five years, it was under 50%. And for three of those five years, it was under 13%. So I would say their debt to equity is pretty good. And that would lead me to believe that their balance sheet is pretty good, which it is. The current assets exceed the current liabilities considerably. And the total assets exceed the total liabilities considerably. So this company is sitting on type, top of all types of cash or assets. Now, in the last five years, they only paid a dividend one of those years. That was in 2021. And um, if we look, we know when a company, the way a company deals with stock, we're very interested in as an investor. As an investor, when they sell more shares of stock, we hate that. When they buy more shares of stock, buy back their own stock, we love that. Well, this company made no change in 2019, but they sold more shares of stock in 2020, 21, 22, and 23. I don't necessarily like that, but it was a small amount, considerably. Usually when you're looking at companies selling more shares of stock, they're selling millions of dollars worth. Well, they sold 175000 in 2020, 17000 in 2021, 301000 in 2022, and $409,000 worth in 2023. So I don't like them selling back more stock, but all the other fundamentals look good and the amount that they're selling is manageable. We're going to skip over changing current and long-term debt because we've pretty much addressed that with the balance sheet and the debt to equity. But the free cash flow, they had 2,026,000 in free cash flow in 2019, 2,073,000 in free cash flow in 2020, 4,252,000 in free cash flow in 2021, 3,000,000 505,000 in free cash flow in 2022 and 1,798,000 in free cash flow in 2023. 
And that's the money they're going to have left over at the end of the year. Now, there's one particular reason that I like to include the free cash flow in my analysis. And that's because companies generally pay their dividends from the free cash flow. So I like to see if they actually have enough free cash flow to pay the dividend that they're paying, or if they're really just giving a dividend to attract people to their stock, but they really can't afford to pay a dividend. Maybe they're borrowing money or something just to pay the dividends. Well, this company doesn't pay a dividend, so that was only a factor one year. In 2021, and actually they didn't have enough to pay the dividend they gave out in 2021. So after paying the dividend, they were negative $15,536,000. But they didn't repeat that. So in 2019, they had, like you said, 2,026,000, 2020, 2,073,000, 2022, 3,505,000, and 2023, 1,798,000. So they had positive free cash flow. They avoided paying the dividend those years. Maybe they will, as they become a larger company and have more money and more free cash flow, they will bring back the dividend, but for now it seems they're leaving it alone. Now, as we come to the statistics on this company, it has a beta of 1.05. And what does the beta mean? The beta means how volatile is this company on the stock market? How much does it move? The market in general moves at a beta of about one. So, if a stock has a beta of more than one, it's more volatile in the market. Less than one, it's less volatile in the market. This stock is slightly more volatile in the market. They currently have 17.46 million outstanding shares, right? There's other companies with much more. So not to say that's a small amount, but compared to other companies, it can be. But of those 17.46 million outstanding shares, a remarkable 38 Point ninety three percent are owned by insiders and those who are involved with the company, those who work in are involved with the company. Generally, when you research a company and you come to insiders, you may see the insiders are one percent, they're less than one percent, but this company, thirty eight point ninety three percent is owned by insiders and 29.82% is owned by large banks and institutions. They have a book value of $2.29. of $2 And we know the book value is if the company was to close overnight, how much money do they have available to pay you for each of your shares. Now, I don't really trust book value, and I have a video in the channel, The Truth About Book Value, that explains why. But in any event, their book value is $2.29, and the PB ratio is 2.34. Now, Let's make sure I get this right. right. Dr. Sharam Askapur 
He was born in 1957. He's the president, CEO, and director. And he was promoted to president in March of 2012. So for the five years that we've analyzed this company, he's consistently been president. Now, this company is in the innovative solutions and support is in the aerospace and defense industry and it's in the industrial sector. So that's my analysis for this company, guys. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Have a great night.